Hi, my name is Claudia Ferrin, and I'm happy to tell you about the study that my colleagues and I recently completed, and that will feature in the May 2017 issue of Developmental Medicine and Child Neurology. Our study examined a novel form of bimanual training for children with unilateral spastic cerebral palsy, uh, and that involved the uh, use of caregivers to deliver bimanual activities in the child's home setting. So children with unilateral spastic cerebral palsy have impairments that are lateralized mainly to one side of the body. Um, these impairments are a result of perinatal brain injury and can affect things such as the planning uh, and execution of movement uh, and even bimanual coordination. Um, there's a lot of evidence to demonstrate that children who undergo an intervention that's based on motor learning principles that's delivered at high intensity and involves a mass practice schedule will actually improve uh, on their upper extremity function. Um, there's also a growing trend to adapt these types of interventions to the child's typical environment. Um, and this could include the home or school setting. Um, this is accomplished by distributing the practice over a longer period and incorporating the use of caregivers to help deliver some of the activities. And so for um, the mass practice models, children typically do about 90 hours of therapy over a period of three weeks. For the distributed practice model, children do about 90 hours of therapy over a period of nine weeks. Um, so our goal for this study was to test an established bimanual intervention, um, hand-arm bimanual intensive therapy, uh, in the home-based setting. And importantly, we tested it against a control group that received an intervention of equal duration and intensity. Um, and it also controlled for the increased amount of one-on-one -on -one attention that children in our therapy group were receiving. So children in our control group uh, did an intensive functional lower limb training. Um, we tested these two in a randomized control trial. The goal of home-based hand-arm bimanual training is to improve reaching uh, grasping, releasing, and really using the affected hand as an assisting hand. The movements are performed in the context of bimanual activities using child-friendly games. And caregivers perform these activities with their children two hours a day, five days a week, for a period of nine weeks to reach a total of 90 hours of training. And although the caregivers were responsible for directing the daily two hours of activities, an important component of the intervention was the supervision that we provided to families. In addition to daily monitoring of activity logs that caregivers submitted online, for each caregiver child dyad, we remotely supervise one hour of activities per week using an internet-based video conference software. And this really allowed us to provide feedback, suggestions for activities, and to model movements for caregivers. We also encouraged caregivers to avoid giving verbal prompts and instead to structure the environment in a way that would elicit use of the affected hand. The activities involved a high number of repetitions of movements and we provided strategies for increasing the difficulty of tasks to match the increasing ability of the children. We found that children who performed home-based by mail training should greater improvements in dexterity and functional goal performance relative to the control group. By supervising parents in the home and working as a team to develop a training plan for children and their families, we can increase treatment intensity. And that's important because treatment intensity has been shown to be an important predictor of the success of an intervention. Um, caregivers were incredibly creative. Uh, they were very engaging uh, with their children um, and they, most importantly, were very happy to play an active role in their child's rehabilitation. Our model of bimanual training provides a valuable family-centered approach that can be used for targeting some of the deficits in hand function uh, present in children with unilateral spastic cerebral palsy. I just want to acknowledge the children and families that made this study possible, as well as our team of colleagues that were involved in this project, including Marina Brandau, uh, Bavini Serrana, Ashley Du, uh, Noel Moreau, and Andy Gordon.